Welcome to Bratislava. This is your urban case study and uh, it's very useful for our students here in Bratislava but if there's anyone else who's interested in knowing about the city then that's great. We're focusing on land use and urban zones and urban processes and Bratislava is I think perfect for, for that because it's big enough to have lots of things going on but it's also small enough for us to get familiar with. Uh, overlooking here is the Stary Mesto, the old town of Bratislava, the central business district if you like. But we can see over there in the background a new downtown being built in the Nivy area. So we see a lot of things going on just here. We've got an expansion of the CBD. Over the river there we have one of the big suburbs that we'll go and see, Petrushelka. and. Yeah, during this video we'll go to different parts of Bratislava and around Bratislava to show you hopefully as many of these different zones and processes as we can. We're not going to go to everywhere, um, but hopefully it'll give you a good um, understanding of what's going on and some useful places to have for your case study. So this is the Stary Mesto in Bratislava, the centre of Bratislava, it's the uh, National Theatre behind us. And yeah, very popular, particularly in the summer, um, all the restaurants have terraces, lots of people out eating, popular for, with tourism, and a uh, very attractive place to be. But not a particularly functional place as a modern city centre. Um, rents are high. Um, old buildings, lots of pedestrianised streets, so it's quite difficult for, not a, not a particularly good location for like modern offices and things like that. And that's why we see a, an expansion of the CBD down there in the Nivy region, which is where we're heading now. Okay, this is Eurovia many of you are familiar with and we're right on the Danube River so you can see that Bratislava is making full use now of the waterfront area not just here but also further up in other parts as well. This really is a continuation of the central business district. The Stary Mesto is just over there and this is this has now expanded the CBD out to include this area of Eurovia and the area that we're going to look at next which is Nivi. So just to go over some terminology, this is an ex example of the zone of transition. So around the core of the CBD, you have an area which is either becoming assimilated into the CBD, so a zone of assimilation, or areas which are being kind of discarded and unused, a zone of discard. Now in Bratislava, this area and the area behind Nivi is very much a, a great example of a zone of assimilation. The CBD of Bratislava is growing and this part and certainly behind us is now what you might call the new sort of downtown of Bratislava. So all the problems of the functionality of the old town, um, lack of space, expensive old buildings have been solved by building this basically new part of Bratislava near the centre. Okay, so we have Eurovia, which um, again interesting shopping centre because it benefits from being central but it's also quite accessible with, with lots of arterial roads and lots of uh, transport as well. Across the river we have um, our park which again is the CBD expanding out across the river so more assimilation in the zone of transition. So interesting times here in Bratislava. Okay here we are in the Nivy area got Eurovea just down there, the old town over there and this is an example of uh, brownfield developments in the zone of transition uh, just uh, and the CBD expanding out to now in really include this area. Um, we have uh, said lots of new developments built on what was uh, derelict land or old, old industrial land and it's filling in this part of the city. One of the key features here is we have what are called multifunctional buildings. So residential at the top and then um, commercial space, lots of office space here and retailing usually on the, on the lower floors. So it's quite possible that many people will end up sort of living here 
and not having to move around the city quite as much as people who, for example, were living out in Zahorska and commuting in uh, every day in their car. So, this is a very dynamic part of the city at the moment. Nivy in the zone of transition, zone of assimilation, brownfield sites. Okay, this is Bori, and we are on the rural urban fringe of Bratislava. So just over there is the suburb of Dubravka. And we have Bori Mall, which is a big out-of-town shopping centre. And then we also have a new hospital that is being built. And just behind us there, um, new blocks of flats, which are called Bori Homes. So this whole area is built on what we can call a green field site. In other words, there was no development here before. This is the city of Bratislava expanding out into the adjacent countryside. Okay. Okay, this is the Volkswagen factory at Davinska Nova Vest, just outside Bratislava. Over there was Zahorska Bistritsa. Down there is Bori. Dubravka. So this is a greenfield site, huge factory, producing I think about maybe a full capacity 250 car, 250,000 cars a year. Fantastic location for a car factory in the European Union, in Slovakia, so the wages are much cheaper than in other car factories like Belgium, Germany, France. Um, workforce from Bratislava, also from Zahorsk. Zahori, a lot of people um, coming here every day to fill up the three eight-hour shifts when they're working at full capacity. Um, plenty of room for expansion. There is a, a, a train link which will transport cars to Western Europe from here and also cars going east to um, Russia also. So, successful car factory, one of quite a number in Slovakia. We've got this, JLR, um, Citron and Kia as well. So big car manufacturing here in Slovakia. But this is a good example of industry on the edge of the city, on the rural urban fringe. So this is Zahorska Bistritsa. It's an example of a satellite settlement within the sphere of influence of Bratislava. This is a small old village and you can see typical of the small village houses, uh, the church, but the real expansion of Zahorska has been over the last few years and we're going to go to a site where we see a lot more of the new developments next. So here we are in the new part of Zahorska Street. so you can see behind as we've got these new blocks of flats that have just been built. All around there's lots of privately owned family homes that have been built and this is having an impact on the village, massively increasing the population. Um, you'd hope that services in the village and amenities in the village um, increase as the population increases. There's certainly a lot more traffic coming in and out of the village because people are moving um, on a daily basis back to Bratislava, commuting. So, this is an example of counter-urbanisation and the growth of a satellite settlement close to Bratislava. Here we are in Petrushelka. This is a large suburb of Bratislava on the south side of the river, residential area, mainly um, what are called panelaki in Slovakia, which means um, apartment blocks built out of prefabricated blocks of concrete. Um, originally they were all publicly owned and now they're all privately owned, they're all owned by the, the people who live here. Um, it's an interesting place because in other cities maybe these, these areas would have gone into decline but here in, in Bratislava, Petrushaka still thrives as a, as a part of the city. Um, if you come here you might be surprised at the amount of green space. There's a lot of 
places that are recreational areas, a lot of playgrounds, sports areas, um, cycle paths, there's two lakes, people can go swimming. So also because it's a planned area, a lot of thought's gone into provision of services, provision of amenities like doctor's surgeries, primary schools. So it does function as a as a residential area. Um, so that's Petrushelka. Okay, final stop here in Dubravka. This is another suburb, another residential area of Bratislava. Here we've got old Dubravka. So this used to be a small village and it's gradually become part of uh, Bratislava. And you can see over in the background there we've got lots of, um, again, the Panalaki like we saw in, in Petrushelka, but a few more family homes, a few more detached houses, and right next to beautiful forests up there in Divinsky Kovalo. So, Hope you've enjoyed the film, hope you found it useful, thanks for watching. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Am I rolling or not?